Yeah. Um, so I I don't get to see my parents often. If you don't know, my parents live in Seattle and I'm currently in LA. So I actually haven't spent the holidays with them in two years. This might be the third. Um, they are planning to come down to California to celebrate Christmas. I took almost two weeks off um, during December. So I'm hoping I get to see my parents then. But my dad actually just recently got diagnosed with COVID. He tested positive. I think it was at the beginning of last week. And my mom might also be positive, obviously, since they live together. So that's just been really stressful. Obviously, I know there are a lot of people probably going through the same thing with family members and friends that are positive for the virus, but it just really sucks when you don't live near your family and you can't see them or support them. Granted, my my dad doesn't have any like negative symptoms. He just doesn't have a sense of taste or smell, and my mom is is pretty much fine as well. So I'm thankful that they're okay, but it just it's obviously very concerning, especially during the holidays when both of your parents are positive for COVID, knowing how much damage the virus can do. Um, but luckily, they've been in good health and they are in good health. So I'm hoping by the time that December comes around, they are not positive anymore so we can still have or celebrate Christmas together. But that's pretty much been like a really stressful thing going on in my life. It's just kind of worrying. Like I said, they, they're they okay. It's just like, oh, that thought of what could potentially happen. You know, we've heard so many stories of people who are in their early 20s or even younger that are perfectly healthy and still end up either passing away or having really, really, really bad experiences with COVID. So yeah, that's basically what I've been dealing with for the past week or so. It's good to hear that they are okay, because that's definitely something that it's scary for anyone to have to go through. Um, and it's just really, it's unfortunate that like it's gone to this point where I feel like it's so normalized that it's like, oh yeah, everyone's going to get it. But like, that's not how you should see this. Like this is a serious thing. And um, it is really great that um, that they aren't experiencing any negative symptoms or anything like that. But it is wild because it's the holiday season. So like imagine if you hadn't known or they were asymptomatic and you like flown there for the holidays or flown there for Thanksgiving and then you got it and then like everyone you see gets it and everyone they see gets yeah. it and then like because it's like it truly like this web. It's just so it is like a fact. Yeah. And and so like it's really a scary, scary thing that like like COVID happens so quick and it's like so easy to catch it. And so definitely is a serious thing that I feel like isn't taken seriously by like a lot of people in our country, as well as definitely um, not, <laughs> as well as all the politicians in our country. Um, I think Trump has been golfing ever since the fucking election results. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's like it's really it's really uh, shitty because people are dying um, more and more, especially um, with the uh, every like with. Uh, uh, the holidays coming up with it getting colder, people are getting sick again, and it's getting really bad. And so it is really worrisome um, of the potential like devastation that this can bring. And people have been, they get it more than once. People can get it several times. So um, yeah, this definitely is something that I think everyone should take seriously. I want to like put that out there. Wear, you wear your fucking mask. Don't be like that asshole exactly. that like I had to experience on a plane that wasn't wearing their mask. Like wear your mask. Be good people. Make good decisions. Yeah. It's just it's crazy. I feel like in LA specifically, we're gonna head into another lockdown because people literally don't care. I feel like most people here have kind of resumed back to their daily normal lives, except now they just wear masks. But like they're still going out and there's only so much a mask can do if you're consistently going out and you're partying or going out to bars or going out to eat and you're around people 24 seven, there's, I mean, the mask can only do so much. So it, it's really scary, especially during the holidays. This is a time where people like to have get togethers and spend time with their friends and family. So I, I just know that there are a lot of people that are 
not necessarily going to take the virus as seriously as they should. And I'm scared that by January, the numbers are going to like skyrocket because of all of the travel during Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything else. So I don't know if 2021 is going to be much better than 2020, especially in regards to the virus. I mean, yeah, um, I'm really worried because uh, I live in a college town. And so everyone goes home for the break and they all go to their fucking whatever town they're from and around all of their family. And then campuses aren't closed, especially in Florida. Everything's open. So they're all going to come back in clusters and then everyone's just going to get it even worse. And it's going to be, I can already predict it being really bad. So yeah, 2021 does not look pretty. Um, But yeah, like I said, just be good, make good decisions, wear your mask. Um, It's not you that you're trying to like, it's not, you're, you're not trying to prevent yourself from getting, you're trying to prevent other people from getting it. Think about other people and don't be so self-centered. Um, but yeah, make sure, make sure you wear your mask. If we all think that way, none of us would, uh, get the virus. So yeah, please be smart. Uh, don't go to parties. Don't do anything wild like that. Uh, yeah. Think of other people. But with that being said, um, I think it's, uh, we can go on to some fun stuff about uh, Trans Awareness Week, because currently it is Trans Awareness Week, which is really cool. Um, and I'm trans and I'm aware. <laughs> and Gage is trans and she's aware. Um, I'm aware. And- <laughs> but it is really cool to see, like, um, there's some really cool things happening this week that um, are really great for trans representation. And uh, we both wanted to talk about it. I wanted to bring up one uh, little anecdote or one little uh, story that I saw that I thought was really interesting. And that is uh, Playboy Mexico uh, got the first trans um, person to be on the cover. So literally, um, there's a trans woman on the cover of Playboy Mexico. Her name is, uh, yeah, her name is Victoria Volkova. And beautiful, stunning, and yes, super fucking iconic. Um, the the pictures are like gorgeous. Like she's so hot. I'm very gay right now, but like truly, like I, I'm I'm super obsessed um, with this the story. Like she's like a huge advocate, like for the LGBT community, and um, yeah, Playboy, fucking Playboy. Uh, what I grew up knowing as like this, like oh, like this, like stereotypical standard of beauty for women like that's what like people and like men like look at as like this like beautiful person or these beautiful women and to see that like a trans woman is like has a face on playboy is like it seems like a really big deal and especially because i'm mexican and like that's my country um (laughs) my home country but um yeah it's really cool to see like that progress being made like in in societies that I feel like def- desperately need that, like especially like communities that have Catholicism so ingrained into it. And so there's like a lot of internalized issues going on when it comes to accepting people who are from the LGBT community, accepting um, different diverse walks of life. So it's important to have things and figures like this, especially in places that are like that. So for me, it was really affirming to see a Mexican trans woman on the cover of a Playboy magazine. Like that's fucking rad. And I am absolutely in love with it. Go look, find it the the photos. Go like look her up on Instagram. Super fucking cool. Honestly, shout out to Playboy because they in the past like this is their first trans cover, but also I believe it was almost a year ago at this point, Gina Rosero, who like is my idol. I aspire to be her. She's a Filipino trans woman. She was featured in Playboy and she was the first Filipino trans woman to be in Playboy, which was also another great point of representation. Just like you said, like seeing somebody that's literally just like you in a magazine like Playboy, which you wouldn't necessarily think as being open to having a trans person on the cover because it is so sexualized. And I know there are probably a lot of people who don't agree with having a trans model on the cover or having a trans person inside of the magazine itself. But I just think it's a really good thing and part of Playboy. And I honestly applaud them for that representation because you know, this is really important. It's important for people to see that trans 
people, trans women specifically, come in all different shapes and sizes and looks and we're not all the same. And especially during the time, times like this where we have trans representation and transgender week of awareness, it's just really, again, to drive home the point of how important representation is. And it just makes me happy thinking about all of the people who can resonate with these people being inside of Playboy and how inspiring it is and how, I mean, groundbreaking it is. I feel like 10 years ago, I, I would have never imagined a trans person to be in Playboy. That's something I literally never would have crossed my mind. So shout out to Playboy. You're doing a great, sweetie. And also shout out to the beautiful models that are featured in Playboy as well. And congratulations. It's really so cool to see and like the message that she's spreading in the the Playboy magazine, I think she has like a spread and just talking and advocating for trans people like in the magazine, which is really cool. This isn't just like a, oh, she's pretty. We're putting her on the cover. Like this is a statement that she's making in it. And like, it's really affirming to see because like, like this isn't like, and I guess you can like go back and be like, oh, well, they're fetishizing trans people. But like, like this is something that's like historically just been like like women on the cover, like cis women. So to have a trans woman on there, I think it's very, it validates the existence that trans women are women. They they do belong on covers. They do belong on like spreads. They're 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 they can be models. They can be wives. They can be sisters. Like like they're valid in that existence. They're valid in their identities. And so it's really cool. Um, I'm reading on the site right now, like things that she said. And one thing that was really cute, cool to see, and this is from, uh, it's NBC News. Uh, something that she said was, for a long time, I hated my body and I, hating, I hated being a trans woman since I thought that that was what made me a less valuable person, less deserving of love, less normal. Um, and then she eventually went to say that she realized she had to accept herself before she could expect anyone else to. And I, I just think those are like really powerful words. And that's stuff that we've even said on this podcast where being trans is definitely difficult and it's definitely a process. And sometimes there's that like internalized self-hate. But once you come to like love yourself and express yourself, that's when it's important. That's when others see you as like valid and um, start to accept you. So it's just really uh, beautiful to see her words, like embrace your imperfections. She's just saying all this cool stuff. And I literally have just been upset. I've been trying to find like a, like ways to get a hold of this magazine because I just like absolutely am in love with this like story. When you said like fetishizing trans people, I just thought back to last episode in our conversation <laughs> about chasers and how all the chasers in the world are just ecstatic about this. And it just made no. me throw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> Take it back, please. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I was know. like, I, I like moment. going back to like last episode because I think it's important. But like, did you see any like? We got a few comments like like leading up to the episode where like we we're getting like chasers like commenting on our stuff. And I don't know if you saw. Yeah, I feel like yeah. we have a considerable amount or a good amount of our following, probably on Instagram, are chasers. So. I don't know if they felt some type of way if they listened to the last episode, but we said what we said and we meant it. <laughs> so if you're hurt, um, if you feel bad, um, you're still listening. So obviously it didn't <laughs> offend you that much. But um, exactly. welcome to girlish, I fucking guess. <laughs> um, but for Everyone's welcome. Yeah. Check <laughs> We're accepting of all communities except furries. Except Thank that you. One. <laughs>